The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Hello, I'm Javier Hernandez with the United States Courts. Not long ago in Philadelphia, federal offenders just released from prison often returned to the same mean streets where they were arrested, and some also returned to their previous occupations, crime. A team of people at the U.S. District Court in Philadelphia wanted to stop that cycle. They're not always on the same side in the courtroom, but they're a team when it comes to their intervention program in the city of brotherly love. Every year, thousands of violent offenders are returned to the streets and expected to fend for themselves. Within a year, nearly half reoffend. Magistrate Judge Timothy Rice says that's because the criminal justice system doesn't fully address what happens after prison. He felt the system could and should do more. So in 2007, Rice assembled a re-entry team in Philadelphia. We all know each other, we all trust each other, and we had great cooperation from the defense bar, the prosecutors, Department of Justice, the civil bar, and the courts. This re-entry team also includes students from several universities and an army of volunteers. Their mandate was to leverage the manpower of service providers in the community who could address the common needs of people transitioning from prison back into society. They also targeted a very specific type of offender to participate in this re-entry program. We targeted medium to high-risk offenders, believing that individuals who were supervised uh, at a low level would do well no matter what, and individuals who were high in a risk area would do poorly. So we wanted to target that mid-level population. The program is 52 weeks long, although for various reasons it can take longer for individuals to complete. Once they do complete the program, their supervision time is reduced by one year. Graduates rarely re-offend, and in the program's 10-year history, only one participant has been asked to leave. So, Mr. Long, have you been the last, the last time we talked? I'm good, hanging in there. Uh, when we do come to court, the only person that addresses the participants in court directly is me, and it's a very informal discussion. It's on the record, but nobody's sworn. And it's really a conversation between me and the participant about what they've been doing over the last couple of weeks. So tell me, I heard we had a little mishap at work the other day, is that right? Yeah. What um, happened, man? So I was driving the van. And, uh, and what I try to do is also make connections in the courtroom in terms of how this individual might be able to help another individual, or do we have a program that might help with this participant's unique needs, and I make the appropriate referrals in the courtroom. The program's success is largely due to the team's holistic approach, which addresses each individual's specific needs. We all sort of thought, okay, like if people can come home and they can get a job and that can work, they're gonna be fine, right? They don't, because people think that, oh, well, you do, people do crime because they need money. And it's not like barely scratching the surface. People had other issues such as family unification, housing, healthcare, getting a driver's license, uh, learning how to use a computer, uh, dealing with issues such as identity theft that happened while they were inside the prison walls. Um, so I have a question. The team also knew that they would need to recruit help from the community. Excellent. That entails us going out into the community and finding um, exceptional job training programs, educational opportunities, employers, um, cognitive behavioral therapy programs, finding all of those resources that individuals need to reintegrate successfully back into society. Volunteers from Temple University help participants improve their financial literacy and provide guidance on financial matters. It is very helpful to have um, a, a solid credit score um, and it might come into play as well if a participant is, let's say, searching for housing and fills out a lease application. The credit score will come into play there, a car loan, so in any number of areas. Student therapists at Drexel University provide one of the most powerful resources the program offers. It's called CBT. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a type of therapeutic intervention that is focused on identifying problematic or distorted thoughts. And a big part of CBT is recognizing and helping a patient or client recognize that thoughts lead to emotions, which in turn lead to behavior. The team also reached out to potential employers. The Pierogi Kitchen, a Philadelphia restaurant, has aggressively recruited re-entry participants. 
We love the way that the employees really want to show and demonstrate that they have something to give back after being incarcerated. A lot of them want to prove that they, they deserve to be out, that they deserve to be here, and so that drive translates to their work performance. I had a reentry participant tell me once, I praised him for doing some positive thing in the community, in his life, and I told him how proud I was of him. And he said that's the first time anyone in his life had told him they were proud of him. It's beautiful. It's like something you never experienced. The help and support is awesome. King took advantage of many of the program services, like resume writing. She now works for the city. Many of the participants come home to families that they haven't seen in years. The ability to rebuild those relationships is a good barometer for how successful a participant will be. A lot of the participants really care more about what happens with their family than themselves. And a lot of times they're the main breadwinners of the family. So for them to be successful and receive a, a, you know, a pat on the shoulder from a family member or at a boy, you're doing well, it really, really raises their chances to not recidivate. The changes, not only that it made it me, but that it also made it my wife. That, you know, she sees that I was really trying to make better means, but not only for myself, but for the family. And like I said, the program helped out a lot. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about the program is that it operates without a budget. Team activities fall within the normal duties of court staff, although many volunteer their personal time. Student therapists from Drexel apply clinic hours to their PhD program requirements, and students from Temple's Law School and Business School receive class credit for their contributions. There's no arguing with the results. During an 18-month study by LaSalle University, new arrest for non-graduates was 46%, but only 8% among graduates. Participants were also far less likely to violate terms of their supervision. A lot of people from jail, they don't get a lot of respect. This place here, regardless if they're judges, social workers, they treat them all with respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they treat them like they're just as equal. And I think that means a lot for these people coming back in. It gives them their boost of confidence that they need. They don't feel talk, like they're being talked down to. It's a wonderful environment. The program's supervision is intensive, and it may not be viable for every court. But numbers don't lie. The program works. In fact, there are similar programs around the country. And while the reentry program is designed to change the participants, it's also changing how justice is being administered in Philadelphia. I think from all angles, um, reentry court sort of, uh, it's successful because um, it changes people's perspectives and sort of humanizes the criminal justice system. I do it because I see it as a win-win for the students, my university, and the participants in this program. It's by far, for me, the most meaningful thing I feel like I've done in graduate school. It's where I've seen the most impact and felt that I've done the most good in a place where it really matters. Just the fact that you have prosecutors there, I think sends a good message to individuals that, that the system cares about them. And if justice is solely punitive, the results are gonna be temporary and the results are gonna be fleeting because the statistics show, the evidence-based practices that I know probation is following show that Recidivism will continue to be a problem if we don't take restorative measures to help people rebuild their lives. The program has an unofficial motto, once you're in the family, you're always in the family. Participants and their family members are welcome back anytime to use program resources. Thanks for watching. I'm Javier Hernandez with U.S. Courts in Washington.